Welcome to Moscow, the capital city of Russia, and 2012, the home of the Silk Way Rally. This, the fourth chapter of the successful Rally Raid adventure. Over the next six days, 84 cars and 24 trucks will try and conquer sand and mountain as we take in 4,000 kilometers of Russian countryside. The fourth edition of the Silkway Rally is better organized than the preceding ones. We've improved a lot the quality of the racing terrain and the competitors' field. For me, the most important thing is the competitors, though, and everyone is happy to be here to start the race again from Moscow, especially starting from the Red Square. A lot of them have been coming up to me and already imagining what they'll feel like on the starting podium in front of the Kremlin. Sportingly, we've increased the length of the selective stages and decreased the length of the road section, so of course that's much better for the assistance vehicles. But besides that, the competitive stages will be much more difficult than past years, with more length, more difficulties and more sand. Pierre Lartigue, who did the recce's, told me that the drivers will have a lot of pleasure at the wheel, but also if we double the Silkway Rally distance, we could have a race as difficult as the Dakar. So let's have a look at the route then. It begins with a small liaison to Ryzan before heading to familiar bivouacs in Volgograd, a loop at Elista and Mekop, and we finish on the Black Sea after six days of gruelling off-road travel. There are a multitude of marks and countries in the cars, but the favourite comes from the new home of off-road. Argentine Lucio Alvarez has the same overdrive Toyota he took to fifth in the Dakar and runner-up in Qatar. The itinerary includes lots of dunes, 50 or 40 percent, which is really good for us because on the dunes we go very, very well. We know that we are among the favourites, but the level is very, very good here. So we'll try and keep a good pace, but we know the navigation will be the crux and very, very difficult. Alvarez's main competition is likely to come from the G-Force team. Experienced in the Silk Way and moreover, based and racing in Russia, Boris Gazadin leads the team. I'm really sorry X-Ray team are not here because I like to compete against the strong teams, strong competitors. As a co-owner, I built my own car and I want to still develop it, to grow it, to get better and better. And the only way to do this is by fighting with the good drivers. Anyway, even if this year there are some pretty strong rivals like Slesher, so I think that the fight will be very, very tight and I look forward to it. Matthias Kala is a seven-time German rally champion and one-time runner-up at the Silk Way Rally, but his new Mercedes is a bid for the very top spot of the podium. Ja, das Fahrzeug ist komplett neu umgebaut like worden auf ein äh, sechszylinder Dieselmotor und ist letzte Woche das Last erste Mal überhaupt gelaufen. Wir sind jetzt hier, um bei der Rally Erfahrung zu sammeln, einen Test zu machen für die Rally Dakar. Ja, ich denke, mit einem äh, zweirakettigen Fahrzeug kann man nicht ganz nach vorne fahren in die ersten fünf, aber mit dem allerakettigen Fahrzeug schon und das ist das, was wir top. anstreben. Christian Lavier heads up an entourage of Desudra run machines. His may look like a Nissan, but under the bonnet is the old Mitsubishi Lancer power plant. Lavier and the team come here after victory in the Karma Baha. It's true that the Dakar was a long time ago and we didn't stay there for very long. So since then, we've only just raced one Baja. We're looking forward to driving again as a competitor to fight on the track to show the potential of the car. And we're really very impatient to do this. Otherwise, the race will be over very quickly and we should start straight away to be on a good pace and not to lose too much time in the beginning. Better known as a WRC stalwart, Tony Gardemeister comes here as a rookie to Rally Raid. The experienced RE Auto Club's Mitsubishi will be his steed, but the flying spin is, is being you know, learning progress all the time. Uh, you know, it's difficult to add your speed and everything for, for these kind of ra races after traditional rallies. 
And also, you know, at the moment while I'm also driving here, it's, it's so difficult to find any sponsors or something at, around the world or Europe or, or even Finland or something like this to, to, to continue in normal rallies. Two-wheel drive class should be just as exciting as the four-wheel machines with the giants of off-road going head-to-head. -head. It's a debut appearance for Jean-Louis Slesher and his Russian co-driver, and he's hoping to fight for the win despite making no predictions. I don't like to plan things. I just try to go full throttle all the time. Of course, if things start to go well, I manage to build a gap. Then I'll start to control it. Otherwise, the strategy is just to go as quickly as possible, depending, of course, on the terrain. Philippe Gash's SMG team is led by Ronan Chavo, the T2 champion and recently crowned two-wheel winner of the Dakar. His buggy is powered by a 2013 compliance engine. Yep, we're here to compare it with others. And here is a perfect place to do that with strong opposition like Schlesher and the Dassault cars. So it'll be very interesting to fight against them. We know each other very well because we've been driving a long time with each other. So we can see how the progress in each other's driving skills mirrors the improvement of our cars. So I think we'll have a very good but tight fight in this Sword Cray rally. Leading lady racer Isabel Patissier is also in a two-wheel drive buggy. Hers is powered by just a one-litre Honda. But can this little machine fight with the big boys? In a financial point of view, it's really much cheaper to use a bike engine. Furthermore, with this very light car, we have an interesting power to weight ratio. And it's very fun to drive as well. It's like a big toy, which gives me a lot of pleasure at the wheel. But of course, it's the first outing for the car in a real race. We did do a test in Morocco and on Ali's track, but there's nothing to compare with the Silk Way Rally. Last year, Thierry Magnaldi developed a Polaris buggy on the Silk Way. This year, it's a Nissan Juke. Let's hear all about the new car. As you can see, and maybe not believe, this is the same buggy that I had on the last Dakar. But by magic, the Suja team has transferred it. They've adapted a juke skin onto my buggy, which was very complicated because they had to take out uh, and change the size, enlarge some points and reduce some others. And all of that in only three weeks. We'll have a better aerodynamics with this juke skin, which helps also the engine cooling uh, with new airflow. And for me at the wheel, I have to know, I have now much better vision. There's some modifications on the inflating of the tyre system, which is now uh, more efficient as well. You can see at the back of the car that there's a lot of work on the intercooling system, and they work also on the uh, braking pads as well. We had some issues in the past on this section, but now we've hopefully fixed everything, and at least we've changed the suspension system with a new uh, provider. And in the two-day tests that we had before coming here, we saw that it was really, really much better with the handling in the twisty and bumpy stuff and the fast sections too. So, that's about it for the new Duke. So, to the trucks and the main show of the Silkway Rally. As per usual, it's Russia against Holland. The Kamaz team has an obvious objective. Of course, our main goal is to win the race. And we'll do everything to get that. We're here to fight until the last meters of the last stage. And that's what I really like, fighting a lot on the track. You know, we're all competitors, but we all want to offer a nice and fast race to the competitors. So I'll drive at my maximum level to be competitive, but also to do a good show. Having starred over his teammates in 2011, the Astana machine of Arthur Victor leads the Blue Army. But Eduardo Nikolaev will want to repeat his 2010 win. There are seven Kamaz master trucks. Perhaps Arat Mardav can show his pace. Our equipment is very, very fast. We know that, but on the MEN side, they're also very, very strong. And now with Lopez, in addition to Ekna, who are both regular Dakar drivers. So they've got uh, really good crews and good trucks. 
It won't be easy to beat them, but that's what's really interesting for me, to have a good fight. And it'll be very interesting to see Lopez at the MAN wheel, because he said on the internet that his new truck is the fastest he's ever driven, and that he already likes it a lot. So we want to know if that's true. We know that he's a very fast competitor with his Tatra, so we look forward to seeing him in the man. The winner of the 2011 Silk Grey then is back to defend his title, but as he said, in different colours and a different badge on the truck. Now uh, the time has changed and I'm a, I'm a part of uh, Insta for Adveca Aerial team, so I'm always saying that it's like a bus, yeah, really comfort. But uh, uh, it's uh, since it's born, it's uh, really a WRC, but uh, 10 tons uh, of weight. Really, a really fast track, and uh, I have to settle down in the first stages to the track, but uh, from my point of view, it's really interesting concept. With Lopez and Verschluss, Franz Egner is hoping man have the strength in numbers to really mount a challenge to the Russians.